what's up guys? My name is Zach and for the last seven days I've been driving the 2024 Volvo XC60 Recharge. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four along with a plug-in hybrid system and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be making this video because I have been enjoying the XC60 for the last seven days. I've done over 600 miles in this car, the most I've ever put on one of these press vehicles. And so I'm excited to share my thoughts with you. Many good, many not so good. So by the end, we should have a good idea of what the XC 60 is and if you should buy one. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that drivetrain. Well, under the hood, it starts off with a two liter turbocharged inline four, an absolutely lovely engine in terms of power, but the added plug-in hybrid system with its electric motor gives the complete system 455 horsepower. Now, of course, you do need some type of charge in order to harness all of that energy for a sustained amount of time, but with a full charge in sport mode, this car will knock your socks right off. It is very quick, it is very fun to drive, and so if you are looking for a fun-loving, fun-driving Volvo XC60, I would highly recommend looking into the plug-in hybrid. So with a full charge, you could drive about 30 miles on all electricity, and on a regular wall outlet, it takes about 12 hours for a charge. Of course, a lot less time if you do have 240 available to you. And this highly affects the fuel economy. With a full charge, if you are in hybrid mode, you'll get 40-ish miles to the gallon, but without it, I was averaging around 19 miles to the gallon when the battery was dead. So, short trips, you're gonna get great fuel economy, longer trips, you're not. Now, like I said, paired to it is an eight-speed automatic, and honestly, it's been a joy. I haven't had any complaints driving around town with it. I have no notes, and that's a very good thing for a transmission to have. Last but not least, this, of course, is all-wheel drive. How does it feel to drive the XC60? Well, it drives like pretty much all of Volvo's other SUVs, which is pretty good. Visibility is great. Steering is a little stiff, but not the end of the world. The suspension is a little bit harder as well than I was expecting, at least on the highway, and because this does have air suspension and active chassis from Volvo, it's still a little tough, but it's not the end of the world. It's still a luxury vehicle, and it certainly feels that way. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster. Speed off to the left, sort of a tachometer. It's more of like a power gauge off to the right, and tons of great features to look at. Of course, there is a map in the center as well, and you can toggle that on and off. On the steering wheel on the left, we have our adaptive cruise control options. And off to the right, we have our skip track volume and selectors. Depending on what is highlighted, these might do different things like selecting warnings or things like that. And overall, the steering wheel is nice. It's not as nice as I feel like it could be, but I like the Volvo badge right in the middle. Off to the left, we do have a climate control vent, trunk release and gas cap release. And moving out of the door, we have two levels of memory seats, lock and unlock. Our Bowers and Wilkins speaker we'll talk about in a second. And down below, we have our power mirrors and power window adjustments. Moving up into the center, this is where we have another Bowers & Wilkins speaker. This is a $3,200 option for the Bowers & Wilkins sound system. And I have to say, I do like it a lot. It's one of the best, if not the best sound system fitted to a modern car that I've driven and used for an extended amount of time. I know that that was a lot of different categories, but it is a very very good sound system. If you are a fan of music and tone, this is something you should definitely opt for. Down below, we have two climate control vents that surround the center screen. And this is the worst part of the car. Start off not so strong with the fact that it does not have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You will have to plug your device in through a USB-C. That's fine, I can deal with that. The issue is the usability. The climate controls are 100% ran through this screen. So anytime I wanted to change my temperature or the location of the heat or AC, I had to get rid of whatever music or map I was looking at. It felt like everything I wanted was several clicks away. I had to find it. I had to scounge around in this infotainment system 
just to do simple tasks. And that was extremely irritating. I do get one single physical button for the infotainment, which is the home button, which isn't really that helpful. Down below that, we do have our hazard switch, defrost, skip track, and volume buttons. These are physical, and I love them. Moving into the center console, up at the top, we do have a little cubby that is openable. And we have a larger cubby, which has the 12-volt outlet and cup holders in it. So we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the Volvo XC60 recharge. And unfortunately, yet predictably, it fails the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> Off to the left, we do have the crystal shifter, which contrary to popular belief, is not a magnet for fingerprints. It actually rarely got any fingerprints or even smudged up with my time with the vehicle. I think it looks lovely, especially at night, and I'm a big fan. Down below that, we have our engine start stop switch, which is a turn switch. Very interesting to see that. Then we have our power parking brake and brake hold. The center console has two USB C's in it. It's rather small, but it's semi useful. And then we got to talk about the seats. The seats are a very nice wool blend seats and I love them. This is the centerpiece of the interior for me. They are very comfortable. They heat up very quickly with the heated seats. However, if you do opt for the wool blended seats that you're seeing here, you cannot get cooled seats. So if you want the cooled seats or ventilated seats, you have to opt for the leather and not the wool. But I think I would go with the wool if I were to build my own. However, speaking of seats, we have one more row of seating. So let's go do a backseat review. All right, so we're in the back of the Volvo XC60 Recharge. And what is blinding me right now, I have to put my sunglasses on, is this giant sunroof that we do get to enjoy. Love that. Knee room is okay, headroom is good. 5'11", not a small guy. And the driver could be nice and move up. The passenger seat does move up quite a bit and has more leg room. The rear seats back here are also heated. Very nice to see. And I do get two USB-C chargers back here as well. However, the climate vents are actually on the B pillars, which is kind of interesting positioning. I also get my own Bowers and Wilkins speakers back here. The wool blended seats carry on back here. And we do get pop out cup holders in the back as well. Yesterday, I actually drove two friends two hours north for a remote control car racetrack. And my friend Nick rode back here and I didn't hear any complaints from him he said it was a nice ride and so that is all of the evidence that you need let's hop into the very back we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks right around the back of the volvo xc60 recharge pull it up here and as you can see my remote control car from yesterday is still in the vehicle thought i'd kind of show it off for scale this is my jacket my full jacket over here and we can pull this up and we do get some storage and of course the charger down below. And we do have these fun buttons over here that will raise and lower the vehicle, like I said, with that air suspension to make loading things either easier or uh, harder, I guess, if you want it to be. Overall, I really, really enjoy the cargo space of the XC60. I think it's very adequate. I think it's very on par with a lot of other vehicles in this class, and I didn't feel like I was at a deficit when trying to fit anything in here. I don't think I have a picture, but we had, God, it had to have been eight or nine of these RC cars and our toolboxes all back here, which was really, really fun, and it fit well. It wasn't an issue at all. Very good space in the back of the XC60. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I wasn't expecting much, but I love the look of this XC60. Absolutely love it. I think it looks cutting edge. I think it looks very handsome. I think it looks macho. There's some vents in the right places, and I just think it's a fantastic looking SUV. And another thing I love about the exterior is that when you park it and lock it, because this one was optioned with the air suspension, it actually sort of kneels down. It lowers itself as low as it can go when you park it. So it has this cool lifelike feeling to it when you walk away from it. It's like, it, oh, I finally get to rest. I finally get to sit down. That is a very, very cool feeling. And I love that with the exterior. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think having driven the XC60 the most amount of miles of any car on the channel besides the ones that I own. Well, I have loved my experience driving the XC60. It's a very comfortable vehicle. It has fantastic features. And besides the center screen, which is very annoying to use, I like it. I like it a lot. The power is 
wonderful. It will catch you off guard if you're not paying attention, and that is a very fun spot to be in for an SUV. I don't feel like a soccer mom driving this. I feel like a cool, hip guy. And although I might not be a cool, hip guy, it's good to at least feel that way. And that's thank you to the XC60. However, there are two glaring issues. The first one we already touched on. That infotainment system is terrible. And the more I use it, the bigger headache I got. But the second thing, the thing that would honestly genuinely keep me from purchasing this vehicle, although I love it so much, is that I'm scared about the long-term reliability. With the plug-in hybrid system, there's a lot of parts that could go wrong. This car, for some reason, keeps telling me that the sensors are too dirty for parking sensors when I've washed the car two times. Now, that's a complete drop in the bucket. There is a software update available for me right now. I'm sure it's nothing. But for 2,000 miles, but all of the screens, the two liter turbo, the plug-in, it just has me a little worried. And so by far, the best advice that I could give you is that the XC60 Recharge is an absolutely wonderful vehicle to lease. Lease one of these. Lease one of these yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Lease three of them. Lease one for your grandma, one for your grandchild, whoever. These cars are wonderful and comfortable, and you will enjoy the driving experience. I just don't know how pleasurable the experience will be in 10 to 15 years, where the air suspension is on its way out, when the screen is glitching, and when the turbo is consuming oil. But for now, from where I'm sitting, this car is incredibly comfortable and absolutely a wonderful driving experience. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Volvo for loaning me this vehicle for the last seven days. I am always excited to have a Volvo on my schedule. They are wonderful to work with and some really, really fun cars. Huge thank you, of course, to Drive Shop for facilitating the cleaning and delivery of this vehicle and the Midwestern Automotive Media Association. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.